So at this point, I think it would be fair to say that I'm somewhat of a blade collector. I have a few, but today I wanted to talk about my essentially, essentially my bushcrafting knife shortlist. Now, like I said, I do have a lot of bushcrafting knives and I do love to use a lot of them uh, as much as I can. And I enjoy using a lot of them as much as I can. Now, in fairness, some of these may get more field time than others, but as far as it goes, this is essentially my bushcrafting knife shortlist, or when I want to go out into the field and do anything, these are usually the knives that I will choose, or one of them, sometimes two of them. So without any further ado, guys, as always, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Instagram and Patreon for behind the scenes stuff. And now let's jump into it. Okay, so let's just jump right into it with the first of them, and that is the Falkneven F1. Now the little Falkneven F1 is one of my favorites for especially any type of cold weather or kind of corrosion resistance for any type of cold weather or wet weather uh, where corrosion resistance is definitely favorable. So that is kind of the primary time that I will go for this one because as a smaller blade, it is still incredibly robust and incredibly tough. And the nice part about it having a nice full convex grind is the fact that it will cut very deeply and it will It'll cut very deeply and it'll be very precise, especially when it comes to carving, notching, and doing game processing. It's definitely one of my favorites for those types of reasons and for those regards. Uh, and overall, it's a very comfy blade, nice and thick stock of steel, so it's also pretty robust, which is something that I definitely enjoy because as most people know, I'm not easy on my knives. I tend to use them pretty hard as well as they should be. So the Falkneven F1 has to be on the list because it just checks a lot of boxes. And while it is marketed as a survival knife, it's not my favorite survival knife in you know kind of regards to its size. It does make a really fantastic bush craft and wilderness general purpose blade. In addition, I think it pairs really well with things like hatchets, axes, and saws, which is definitely a prerequisite. Okay, another one that is fairly budget, though there's no particularly cheap knives on the list, is the SE3. Now, similar to the sliciness of the F1, I think that the SE3 is another very slicey blade that is good for game processing, natural material processing, and overall that kind of stuff. Now, it is also pretty good at doing crafts and, you know, it can certainly, you know, do things like tri sticks just fine. It'll also do really well with things like feather sticking, but uh, it does not have quite a thick blade. And so while this blade is certainly robust enough to take an absolutely brutal beating and you can really, really pound on this thing without any concerns, uh, one of the bigger issues when you do have thin stalks of steel and you're trying to do things like batoning is just in the fact that the blade isn't really thick enough to kind of splay apart wood. So while this will take the abuse, it might not really be that good at doing your more industrial tasks just because it's super thin. And so you have to exert more energy to break apart pieces of wood because your knife isn't really acting like a wedge. So anyways, that's kind of the, the downside to the SE3. But aside from that, the SE3 is pretty darn comfortable. And the other thing I like about the SE3, unlike many of these blades, is that it's just a super slim, super thin package. So if you want to like throw a knife on you and it's not really going to be particularly uh, and you don't really want to add a lot of bulk or weight to your kit, this is a really solid option for that reason. Okay, another one that is actually gonna be on the larger side, and I do have a couple larger blades in this uh, list, is going to be the Topps Fieldcraft. Now the Fieldcraft itself is a, it's on the thicker side and chunkier side, definitely pretty hefty, but actually I think because of how well weighted this blade is, even though it is larger, it feels pretty comfortable in hand. And I think that the Brothers of Bushcraft many years ago when they designed this knife, absolutely nailed the ergonomics on this blade. And it is super comfy. Of course, this is my very old original Topps B.O.B. Fieldcraft. And uh, it is just a fantastic blade that is very tough, very durable. And if you're looking for a medium sized blade or when I'm looking for a medium sized blade, this is definitely the one that, this is definitely aside from the other one I'll mention on the short list 
four knives that I choose. Now, like I said, I'm not as big a fan, especially nowadays of medium sized knives. I tend to like or tend to choose, you know, blades that have a blade length of under four inches or right around four inches and an overall length of under 10 inches or usually right around nine to nine and a quarter inches. That being said, that leads me to one of my favorites and admittedly it doesn't see as much carry time as some others, but this has to be one of my absolute favorite blades just for the sentimental reasons. Of course, this blade was developed by Morris Kohansky or in part developed by Morris Kohansky. This was one of the knives of the few that he actually did own and it is a really fantastic blade. Once again, very good general purpose wilderness blade that is going to be able to perform just about any task and it is also super, super comfortable. Like, like there are no hot spots on this entire blade and that is really awesome. So it is super comfortable, super handy, super comfortable, super Super capable and overall just a nice tough blade. This one's made by LT Wright and like I said this is the Legome and it is made out of an eighth of an inch piece of 01 tool steel. I've of course blued mine for a little bit added corrosion resistance. Okay moving on to one that is a part of that larger group but still on the short list is the good old classic is the Bark River Knives Aurora. Now this one's an A2 and this was one of the first knives that I actually went on to after having the Topps Fieldcraft and I liked the Fieldcraft and that size so I still kind of liked larger knives and this one was just kind of a natural progression because it was still fairly thick in the spine being around 0.17 or around 3 sixteenths of an inch thick and having that 4.5 inch blade length. Now, like I said, these blades, my larger ones don't see as much use, but the Aurora is really quite a fantastic and quite a capable blade. It kind of holds similar properties to the Falcon Even F1 because it is a convex ground blade. So it's very slicey, very thick, thin edge but uh, the, about the only downside being that this is an A2 tool steel the tip itself is a little bit fragile so you do have to be cautious with that and in fact in my first Aurora I ended up snapping the tip off because it was a little bit fragile or on the fragile side so that is a little bit unfortunate but aside from that um, the Bark River Knives Aurora is just a fantastic blade and like the few like a handful of Bark Rivers that I've owned, the ergonomics are just absolutely next level. I love how comfortable these blades are to hold for long periods of time, for long periods of time, and they are just fantastic in that regards. This one's a little bit newer, but I have had BRK Auroras in my collection for a very long time. And like I said, was one of my first blades after the Topps Fieldcraft. Okay, stepping it back over to a smaller blade, but still very capable and once again, reasonably new to the collection is going to be the 3DK or Three Dog Knives MAK or Multi Animal Knife. Now this blade is originally designed to be more of a skinning kind of field dressing game processing knife, but the 3DK MAK is fantastic also for bushcrafting and woodcraft because it does hold that uh, kind of 530 seconds uh, spine thickness and is just a very capable blade and overall I think that the ergonomics are pretty darn comfortable maybe not quite as comfortable as some of my BRKs and the Legome but still more than comfortable enough and this knife is designed really more with the priority of being very tough very overbuilt and very strong so overall there's not too much I can really say about this blade it is just Overall, there's not really too much I can say about this guy, but it is just super capable and very tough. Like I said, the, the knife is really designed more with strength and uh, durability in mind, and it definitely achieves that very well. So that is, like I said, the 3DK MAK, and uh, this one, of course, is in K110. You can get it. You can get it in a plethora of different steel options, and of course, being manufactured in Anchorage, Alaska, I'm a little bit partial to it, but it is a very fantastic, and like I said, very tough, durable blade that I am not afraid to beat the heck out of if need be. 
Okay, now finally the last big knife on the list, and this one actually might be truly the biggest, at least certainly the widest, but this is the BHK or Battle Horse Knives Battle Lore. And of course this one is designed after kind of lore styled, like wood lore, bush lore styled blades. And I really do love that design. Every once in a while, you know, I really get a hankering to take out a wood lore, bush lore type knife. And this is really my go-to for that because it does such a fantastic uh, job. And like I've said in the past, one of my favorite things about this knife is it is a larger blade, as you can see, you know, pushing close to 10 inches in overall length, but it really feels like a smaller knife. You really can choke up on it. The ergonomics are great and it allows you to do things like tri sticks, feather sticks, things like that fantastically. And even though it is just an eighth of an inch stick, eighth of an inch thick piece of O1 tool steel it is extremely durable and I've really put it through the ringer. And this is just one of my favorite knives for general purpose, hard use, and like I said, when I want a blade that's larger, that still performs like a smaller blade, this is usually the option I will run. And for that reason too, it ends up being a cold weather blade very frequently. Okay, arguably, okay. Arguably, I've saved the best for last, and I think I'll actually talk about the JBK Layman next and save my BRK. Uh, Bushcrafter for the absolute last, but this is the JBK Layman. Once again, between the BRK Bushcrafter and the JBK Layman, they probably make up my most likely to choose on the list just because they are supremely comfortable and they have a blade shape that is very useful and they're very small blades that are super, super capable. So like I said, this is the JBK Layman. This one's made out of 8670 tool steel. So it is very tough, very durable, even though it is a little bit smaller and on the thinner side, but with its tapered tang, but between its tapered tang and its well contoured ergonomics, it is absolutely so comfortable to hang on to and to hold for hours to craft, to carve, to do whatever you need it to do. And I just think it looks like an awesome blade. So once again, just there's quite a few personal reasons why I love the blade. And uh, it's just a lightweight, super comfortable, super comfortable, super usable blade. And it allows me to do everything that I need it to do and everything that I want it to do. And I do have it in an old school BRK Aurora sheath from my first Aurora. So that's another fun reason to love it. Okay, the la okay, the last one is downright probably my number one bushcrafting knife just because of the sheer amount of field time that it sees. And I have, similar to my Aurora's, I've had a couple bushcrafters as well. And uh, this blade just fits me like a glove. And there's few knives out there, and you know, if you've collected enough knives, you've probably come across that one blade that is just the pinnacle, essentially. And for me, the BRK Bushcrafter is really that blade for me. It has the perfect thickness, it has the perfect grind, everything on it just really is very well suited to me. And while there are certainly knives on the list, all of them will perform well in you know a wide variety of tasks from tri sticks, feather sticks, you know, batoning, shelter craft, game processing, everything you can imagine in bushcrafting, all of these knives will do a good job. But for me, I think there's just something about the BRK Bushcrafter that uh, just works for me very well. And like I said, like everyone's hands everyone's hands and everyone's uh, bodies are built differently. So, you know, when it comes down to it, the reason why so many knives exist is every knife will work better for some people or better than, better than other knives for some people. And I think for me, the BRK Bushcrafter is that. And also, like I've said before, I've just put hours of field use through both of my Bushcrafters and they just work very well. I also enjoy the fact too that the BRK Bushcrafter, at least in some of their runs, uh, they do make these in CPM 3V, which I do know there is 4V and there are newer steels out there, but 3V is just an incredibly tough and incredibly durable blade steel and uh, it holds an edge forever and once again is something that is a steel that's tough enough to take a 
brutal beating and keep on tanking on. It's literally the type of steel that you could baton through a rock and it wouldn't matter. So that's another reason why I do really enjoy it. Like it's also super comfortable and just fits me very well. So that is the BRK Bushcrafter. You'll notice too, a lot of these knives are set up, this one included, as neck knives. And that is because the vast majority of my go-to bushcrafting blades are set up either as neck knives or set up on baldric rigs because I do prefer to have my belt space very open for carrying other tools and equipment. So anyways, guys, that has been my bushcrafting short list. It's probably more referred to as a not so short list because I know that there are a lot of knives on this list, but these are just ultimately the bushcrafting knives that I use the most. And when I look at them, I'm just genuinely excited to use them, to own them, to collect them. And so hopefully you enjoyed taking a look at these blades. As always, God bless and I'm out.